This video is a review of the African masks. There are four of them pictured here. And we will begin with the female PWO mask. Um, I've heard it pronounced Puo, Wo, and several other ways. Yes, you do need to know PWO, um, and that just stands for female mask. Dates, late 19th to early 20th century. I'll take circa 1900. You do need to know that it's in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I'll just take Congo for short, that's fine. The Chwoke people are the ones who originated the ideas of this mask. Significant about this mask are that it is made by men and worn by men, specifically in full regalia, so it's not just the mask that they would have, the Rafikia cloth covering their body, and it was to honor women. That is the intended purpose and motivation. Formalistically, you have representations of a female face, but it is not actually a real representation of what the female face looks like. You have circular eyes and the crowry shell half-lidded eye opening, so that indicates wisdom and all-knowing. You have the, just the slash of the nose and the very half-closed mouth. Those dots around the eyes are possibly decoration, also possible scarification marks. And just understanding um, that this was well loved, it's repaired on one side, and then it was used by a man to honor the women of the tribe, specifically the young women of who had children or of childbearing age. Next, we have the Bundu mask. Date. Yes, you need to know Bundu. B-U-N-D-U mask. Date, circa 1900. This is from Sierra Leone. However, it's Pan West African. Pan means across. So across many West African societies, they use these Bundu masks. This was the only mask that we have in our entire art, 250 art images, that was made for a woman. So this was intended to be worn in a masquerade performed by women. You can see I added an image here of the women being covered. Um, the mask isn't worn over the face, but it's worn on top of the head, and then the Rafika stuff covers everything else. These were worn by women almost of marriageable age, so they're not yet, they're still not children, but they're not yet a woman. There's a contrast in... You know, we talked about how they were taken into the woods and chalked in white because that was considered um, ugly and unattractive. But the mask itself is black and shiny, and that is supposed to resemble the ideal female beauty. One interesting thing, there's a lot more to that that I won't discuss here. You need to check your notes and review the Khan Academy. But there was another video um, on Annenberg Lerner called Ceremony and Society that I found. And it had some interesting takes, which I tend to believe are more accurate, about the neck and how the face looks kind of squashed and you have those neck rolls. And yes, so the video only briefly touched on them, saying that, you know, maybe it indicates they were healthier. Um, yes, the neck rolls are about female beauty. So the older you are, the more wisdom you had. And then they had necklaces and stuff that were worn around the neck. But... There was the suggestion on this Ceremony and Society video by an African scholar that said, because spirits reside in the deep, dark pools and lakes, that when the spirit emerges and pokes its head through the water, it creates the ripples in the pond. So it creates these concentric circles and rings. So the rings at the neck are a reflection of the emergence of spirit. And I... I would go with that more so than just it's a it's a visual aid of beauty because again what's not mentioned that I'm making the connection to they're about young women and they're trans morphing from a young girl into a woman and so you have that rising out of the lake rising out of the water rising out of their girlhood etc cetera, etc cetera. so you have this idea of transformation and as you rise out of the lake the the circles and the ripples of the pond affect you and everybody else around you so I thought that was a very interesting point that we did not discuss in class. Next, we have <clears throat> the portrait mask, Mbolo. This MBLO, yes, you do need to know MBLO, the portrait mask, and it just means portrait mask. 
Um, it's from the Cote of Bois. That is the Ivory Coast to you guys in English. It's found in the village of Cami. You don't need to know that. Just know early 20th century. So I will take circa 1900. Um, Ivory Coast. And this portrait mask of significance or distinction is that it's a secular mask. It's an entertainment mask. It's meant to be for men as a rite of passage, represents uh, personal status or reflects the attributes of that man in the tribe, um, helps discern social orders. You see the little sort of carving around the face, that little bumpy carving that's a stylized version of a beard. We talked in class about the horns on the head signifying power and authority. You have the triangular representation of the healthy glow on the face. And again, like I mentioned in the statuary video, especially um, I spent some time in the statuary video with the with one of the figures, I think it was the reliquary figure, talking about how you know the strength of the reliquary figure is represented in the muscles and and in and the birth of life in the enlarged belly button, but it's not realistic. This is not Greek ideals of human beauty. It represents an idea. And this portrait mask is not necessarily an exact portrait, so it's kind of confusing in that way. It is not an actual portrait of a person. It's a representative, stylistic representative of them. And that abstract, that abstractness, especially those horns on the head, were used later by Picasso and some of the modern and surrealist and cubist art people. They were influenced heavily by African art because African all throughout the continent of Africa. They used stylistic representations of figures well before, well before modern art came into the same purview. And lastly, we have the, not lastly, sorry, yes, lastly, we only have four of these, the Aka elephant mask. Yes, you do need to know AKA elephant mask, circa 1900, location Cameroon. And one thing we did not discuss in class, but a significant aspect of this is the idea of movement. This mask not intended to be sitting sitting in a glass case frozen in time under you know perfect atmospheric conditions it was intended to be worn as the image beside it shows it was intended to show movement this would undulate you saw the ears flapping in the video um the geometric patterns on the on the mask also help with the flow of movement those those downward triangular figures on the long body of the elephant mask would have moved as the person moves and shown the sort of rippling effect. There are no figures on the mask because, again, it's a stylized representation of an elephant. And an elephant was a symbol of power. We talked about how the leopard skins were worn on the back of the people. You have the very rare African gray and red feathered parrot headdresses seen in the image here. And several other symbols of power and authority. And it was this was a performance piece and meant to be used to show the power and authority of the people wearing it and to honor the spirit from which it was made. So an African elephant. 